Hi guys, welcome to another Clever Art Class. So this week we're going to take a look at this lady. Some of you will recognise her. Um, some of you won't. Um, some of you might also question whether she's a man or a woman, because she looks very much like a man, but she was most definitely a woman. Her name was Georgia O'Keefe. And Georgia O'Keefe was born in 18, have to write it down, 1887. And she died in 1986. So she's been dead for almost 30 years now. And she, actually over 30 years, sorry, over 30 years now. And she lived until she was 99. And the interesting thing about Georgia O'Keeffe, among many things, is that she kept making art all the way up until she died at 99. Um, and we've got some pictures of her working when she was a bit older. So this is Georgia O'Keeffe. Somebody, some of you will be familiar with her and would have done similar classes in your art class. And we're going to take a look at one or two of her paintings. So this is the one that you would see mostly in your art class in the class in the art room in the school. And this one is called Two Poppies. Um, Oriental Poppies. And it's just a ginormous picture of poppies. A ginormous painting of poppies. This one is what do you think? Yep, a very large painting of a very small section of two lilies. It's called Two Calilia Lilies. And Two Calilia Lilies was painted in, it's written down here, 1928. Long time ago. 1928 is almost 100 years ago. That's when this painting was made. Okay, sorry. Where's my little arrow? To tell me I'm going next. So this painting picture isn't a picture of the actual artist, Georgia O'Keeffe. It's a picture, a photograph of an actress playing Georgia O'Keeffe because they made a film about her life because she was so interesting. Um, and she was so interesting because she was born in 1887. So she was an, an, a, a painter in the early 1900s, a very difficult thing for a woman to be at the time. Now she is, it was American, so that helped. The Americans were more, more embracing of a woman artist at the time. And so a hundred years ago, women artists weren't respected. Nobody paid any attention to them. Women weren't supposed to do things like make art. Obviously, it's very different now. And one of the things that um, Georgia O'Keeffe, or probably the most famous thing about Georgia O'Keeffe, is her ginormous paintings of flowers. So this is the only picture I could find to show you kind of the scale of how big her paintings were. So this shows you um, what? What do you think you can see? Yes, the very centre in here is the centre of the flower. And I, the centre looks very like the centre of the poppies, the oriental poppies. And she would have made quite a lot of paintings of poppies. And if you look over here, you can see poppies. So the actress is playing Georgia O'Keeffe, but this is what Georgia O'Keeffe would have done. So Georgia O'Keeffe is looking at the flowers close up to her, and she's making ginormous paintings of them. Um, and that's what she was very famous for. So Georgia O'Keeffe created most of her work in the 30s and the 40s. The 20s, 30s and 40s is kind of where she was kind of at the peak of her career. And so she made um, a lot of her paintings of the large flowers, obviously in the 20s and the 30s. But also around this time, um, she didn't live in a house. She lived in the penthouse suite of a hotel in New York, in Manhattan. And so she moved away from the flowers and started to paint what she could see out the window, which were, what can you see? Hmm, skyscrapers. And skyscrapers at night, most of the paintings that she's made of skyscrapers, one or two of them are in the day. And this reminds me of a film. It reminds me of a character. Do you know a superhero that this reminds you of? Yep, reminds me of Batman too. Um, it looks a bit like Gotham City. 
but it's actually the way that Georgia O'Keeffe saw the skyscrapers out of her penthouse window. So she was living at the very top floor of a skyscraper and looking out the window she could see the very top of all of the skyscrapers in New York or a lot of the skyscrapers in New York at the time. That's just another interesting fact. Last interesting fact about Georgia O'Keeffe is this picture gives you an idea of how old she was when she continued to work and she really did continue to work into her very late 90s. But look at what she's done with her paintings. They're much simpler. So as she got older she worked much in a much more simple way because her hands would have been shakier as she got older. She also did a lot of work in clay not like we would make you know clay pots like we'd make in the art room more that she would make forms with clay so she made kind of beautiful spheres and egg forms with clay and because she could control the clay better with her hands when they were shaky then she could control a paintbrush um, and at this time uh, she was living in Mexico and so towards the end of her life she moved to Mexico some of the children in our school are at the moment planting sunflowers and as a result I kind of focus, that's why I kind of focus a little bit on flowers this week and so this is one of Georgie O'Keeffe's flowers, um, a sunflower from Maggie 1937. So it was painted in 1937 and I suspect it was a sunflower present that Giorgio got from somebody called Maggie. And now I'm going to show you how to paint a sunflower and how to Take the paintings of the sunflower when they're dry and turn them into a collage. So, um, when we're not in the art room, it's kind of okay to have lots of dabs of colours thrown around on whatever kind of a palette we can make. Lids of lunch boxes um, that are finished. You know the way the lids of lunch boxes never find their boxes. Um, so I made up a bit of brown. Who can tell me how we make brown? Yep, red, yellow and blue. Um, keeping the brush dry and having a lot of paint on and stabbing it makes that lovely kind of spiky centre that a sunflower has. And here now I'm grabbing again with a dry brush, grab a bit of yellow. But the yellow, see the way it's running out? It's running out because it's a dry brush. The other reason that I'm showing you how to do this is the size. Making it a very, very big flower, like the biggest your page will let you make. Um, and if you're lucky enough to have paint, you might be lucky enough to have sketchbook cartridge paper. Or a bit of cartridge paper from school, maybe. Um, the back of an old painting or an old drawing you brought home. Um, that you know, don't really want to look at anymore. Sometimes you bring home loads of them that you, and you don't really want all of them. So you could use the backs of them, maybe. Again, dry brush. And to see the way my yellow isn't exactly clean. Different from the way we work in the classroom. Because in the classroom you're sharing the paint all the time. And you're even sharing it with the next class that are coming behind you. So you have to keep it clean, whereas here you don't have to keep it clean because it's your own. And having it a little bit mucky is good in this situation. You see the way the yellow is not a true bright yellow. It's got streaks of other colours coming through it, maybe a streak of red or a streak of blue. It just makes it more interesting. Which is the way that George O'Keefe would have painted too. Now you know from the picture that's the photograph that was taken um of the actress who plays her in a film about her, that um, the way she would work is that page would be on the wall. It would be a giant canvas on the wall, which of course you could do. You could take your page and blue tack it or white tack it to the wall and work that way if you like. I'm just working flat because it's easier to video, to be honest. See the way the brown is kind of pulling into the yellow? It looks kind of nice and interesting to look at. Now, my suggestion for this class really is to make two. 
make two paintings of flowers. Now I chose sunflower, but you can choose any flower. In fact, if you could get your hands on an actual live flower and look at it very closely, that would make an even more interesting painting. And particularly when you're looking at a flower and you notice that the petals are not that really symmetric, beautifully even shaped creatures that we see in pictures. When you look at a real flower, the petals are all bent and twisted and a little bit misshapen. Um, and that's part of the beauty of them, really. Um, nature grows them all beautifully symmetric, but they kind of get blown in the wind or they start to dry off in parts, which makes them more interesting. So the only reason I'm showing you a second um, painting here in this video, excuse me, is to show you that concept of making two flowers. Because further into the video, I'm going to show you how to take those two flowers when they're dry, cut them out and create a little collage with them. Um, and the other reason for that, the two flower thing, is Georgia O'Keeffe very rarely painted one flower on its own. Now she did with the sunflower for Maggie, for Maggie, but I think if you look at most of the rest of her paintings, they're all like the two oriental poppies, the two calla lilies. Most of her paintings of flowers are in pairs. And big sweeps of the paintbrush. Can you see that? Can you hear that scraping noise? And that scraping noise is coming from the dry brush. Now, for some people, that is like what I can't handle, which is nails coming down a blackboard or the chalk. Oh! The chalk coming down the blackboard. Um, so if it's too irritating for you, by all means, just put more paint and a little bit of water on your brush and then you won't have the scraping sound. Okay, so this is the video on how to collage those sunflowers. So when your sunflower paintings are dry, then you can just uh, attack them like this. And the reason I'm showing you the video of this is to see how rough and ready it all is. It's not neat, tidy cutting. There's no need for neat and tidy measured, you know, precision. Not necessary. Um, much more interesting, more natural, just to just loosen up. Loosen up the painting, make it nice and big and open. And the same when it's dry, just come out of it with the scissors and rip into it. And if you don't have scissors, by all means, rip it with your hands. There's no need for it to be, there's no need for you to, um, to cut it with the scissors at all if you don't have one. And the idea then is that we'd work with two flowers just because Giorgio O'Keefe does. But you can make as many flowers as you like. Um, and in my case, I'm going to glue my two flowers onto the bigger page. So put the glue on the back. Fast forward that bit, you don't really need to see every little step of gluing. Somebody took off with my glue stick, so I had to use a pot of PVA. And it's much slower to work with. The glue stick is much better if you have one. And when you're putting it on, not putting it on nice and flat. See the way I kind of curled up? I curled up the edge of it there. And here comes another one. Again, the glue on the back. be there all day watching me putting glue on the back of the flower which could be a little bit boring I'm placing it down and again not worrying about putting anything in any particular precise place And there you go, two sunflowers. You could add green leaves. You could anything, add anything you like. Ooh. 